So we are going to start. I think uh, this is the, the end of the projection of this of the book. You, you are going to uh, look uh, from a PDF that is already available in the website of Centro de Fotografia, the three different versions of this book that is <clears throat> the topic of today. Um, so I think I have to start uh, doing the presentations for today. Uh, I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome uh, the author of this book, uh, Maria Inés Tudasi, and also I want to welcome Grant Romer, who is in charge of the uh, conversation part that we are uh, going to to attend. I have to to say that uh, Maria Inés Tudasi is a historian with a PhD in architecture and urbanism from Sao Paulo University, a cut researcher and advisor at the National Council for Science and Technology Development. She is a visiting professor of the postgraduate program in history and laboratory of oral history and image of the Fulminus Federal University. Between 1984 and 2014, she worked as the Historical and Artistic Heritage Institute at, at the Brasilia Museums Institute as well, especially in the curatorship of the Geja Collection, Brasilania Collection donated to the Imperial Museum, where she worked in conservation, research, and dissemination activities of said collection, reproduced in several pages of this book. As a visiting researcher, Marianne Turasi was worked at the photograph department at the Carnavalet Museum in Paris, uh, and she carried postdoctoral research at the School of Science of Lisbon University in Portugal. Uh, she is the author of several art uh, books and chapter of books published in England, in France, in Argentina, in Spain, and in Portugal. In addition to several articles and books of photography and on Rio de Janeiro heritage and history in Brazil. Uh, among the books publicated by my Ines, we have to highlight uh, poses et arjetos a uh, photography and uh, expositions in the era of the spectacle. Uh, as well, Mark Ferres, Iconography and Patrimony, an, an exhibition of the history of Brazil and his physiognomy of the nation. Uh, Rio and Porto Entre Tempos, and it's a co-author of Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, those two cities, uh, two modern cities, the Brazil of Max Perez, uh, the uh, teaching of history, dialogues with literature and photography. And also she um, was selected by the program uh, at the national uh, school. Uh, this was called in Portuguese Programa Nacional de Biblioteca na Escola. Un Porto para o Rio, Imagens e Memorias de un Álbum Centenario. El Rio 450, Conmemoración e Percursos de una Ciudad. Well, the author of today's book that we are going to present, it's a, a, a very uh, important researcher and a very meticulous uh, a writer. She's a very good teller. She's a very good teller of the history of what we are going to discuss today. Our other guest is Mr. Grant Romer. Mr. Romer has been for more than 50 years 
a landmark of uh, knowledge in photographic conservation, but also she has been a mentor of a lot of generations of conservators around the world, not only in the United States when she was the, when he was the uh, conservator of the Museum of Photography, the George Eastman House. Well, Mr. Romer has been also uh, a very acusius and very interested in the developing of the daguerreotype, not only in the United States, but in other latitudes of the world. He has been also interested for a long time in the first attempts of the daguerreotype in different countries, in Brazil, in Mexico, in France. He's a specialist in the life of Nieves and in the life of Daguer itself. Well, today we are going to talk about the importance of the arrival of the daguerreotype in, in Brazil and particularly, but also the importance of the arrival of the daguerreotype in the South American continent. The book that my Inés has uh, written, La Oriental Hydrography and the Photography, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the first expedition around the world with an art available for all, 1839-1840. This book is important and it's a very uh, uh, deep application because it explains the situation of uh, the America, the Latin American countries in the south part of the equator and also the moment in which this uh, invention appeared in the continent. Our relationships with uh, Europe and the context in Europe. It's very important to our history of photography uh, to show up and to analyze all this context that is going to be a remarkable influence we must have to remember that the, in the beginning of the 19th century, most of the America, the Latin American countries were in the process of being independent countries. So we were looking to France mostly and not too many to Spain. We are, were trying, we, we were trying to organize our, our political situation, our life, as independent countries. Well, this book, The Oriental Hydrograph and Photography, uh, written by and researched by Maria Inés Turasi, has six chapters, a conclusion sector, and several appendixes. And the introduction, written by our, our good friend and a splendid historian former director of the uh, uh, Historical National Muse uh, Historical Museum in Rio de Janeiro. It's a very important uh, introduction to, to the work that precedes. Uh, I think that is very important to, to know that this book is a long shot of research, of uh, working in the field of libraries and archives around uh, Brazil, around Europe, and that uh, this uh, history is going to be told by the same author just after my words. I want finally to remark that uh, the Central Photographia in his, in its uh, mandates and objectives 
has very clear the role of uh, promoting and to publish these kind of uh, investigations, these kind of works. Uh, just after 180 years, uh, then we can celebrate with this in book, not only the arrival of the daguerreotype in, in Brazil, but also uh, the arrival of the daguerreotype in Uruguay. Uh, this is uh, the main objective. This is a remarkable landmark for the Central Photography to put uh, a part of this uh, effort, uh, a part of this, uh, a piece of this puzzle to all the uh, scholars and historians of photography that are interested in uh, rebuild, in find the origins of the uh, daguerreotype and the photography in the South American continent. Uh, for the Center of Photographia, it's not only sufficient to publish this book in Spanish and in Portuguese, but also now in English, because we know perfectly that what we have to do is to spread in, in the major uh, uh, fields, in the major environments, the work that Maria Inés Durasi has been doing. Say, saying that I have to uh, ask Mr. Uh, I have to ask uh, Marines Turasi to take the, the session, to take the microphone, and to present this uh, book, uh, and that she has prepared a special talk for, for us uh, for today's presentation. Please, Marines, welcome. Hello. The floor is yours. I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I thank you, Fernando, for your introduction, and especially I thank uh, all the people who are in this conversation, and uh, I will give my thanks to Centro de Fotografia later. So, uh, I, I, I think this opportunity to be here is wonderful for me. I am very happy for this. And uh, I expect to make a short uh, presentation of the book for the ones who had not read the book yet. And later to have another, this more informal conversation with Grant that will be a profitable opportunity to to get uh, to go deeper into the subject with uh, such an specialist like him. So we are going, Grant is going to introduce himself also, or I can make my yes, presentation. Please. Yes, uh, uh, Grant, you want to say something before my Ines make his presentation? Uh, well, it's an honor to be uh, given the opportunity to uh, participate in uh, this uh, event here, uh, it's, uh, it's a meaningful one uh, to me in many different ways. Uh, my interest in photography begins about the age of 10 years old. Uh, my father bought me a daguerreotype, because, uh, uh, well, it's a long story, but he bought me a daguerreotype. He knew what a daguerreotype was. Uh, I was interested in history because of him. He, it was explaining the world to me. Here was this, here was that. Uh, I grew up in New York City, so there was a, a lot of history uh, in one way and no history in another compared to uh, Paris or Rome. Uh, New York had only maybe two, 200 years of history uh, to be pointing to, uh, and most of it wasn't visible, uh, actually. It was here was. Here was, here was all the time. Uh, I got interested in the history of photography uh, through the celebration of the American Civil War in uh, 1960. It was the 100th anniversary and a lot of publications were made at that time illustrated with 
photographs, uh, extensively illustrated with photographs. And through that, I learned what a photograph was. Through that, I learned that photography is about time. Uh, through that, I learned what a daguerreotype was, the first form of photography. And when I saw one for sale, my father bought it. And my first thought was, what? Why don't they make these anymore? And it began an inquiry that led eventually to my uh, going to the Eastman House in 1970. And I was there uh, professionally for the next 37 years. And it's basically an inquiry that started very early. Uh, once I was asked uh, the question, why photography? Why are you interested in photography? And I said, well, uh, because it touches everything else I'm interested in. And the person who asked me the original question then said, well, what else are you interested in? And after talking for about 15 minutes, I realized I was interested in myself. Mm. Uh, somehow photography touched something in myself. Uh, and that was basically uh, curiosity. And curiosity is a question. And that question is what we'll talk about later. Uh, you have to have a, a question about what happened. It's not just what happened. It's what you ask about what happened, why you want to know. And that's basically just my credential here. I've been a long time asking the same question and getting great answers. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Grant. Well, well, well. so now we so have. So then, yes. Uh, then I will I will share my presentation here. Let's see how I do it. So, uh, it has to be. Sh uh, we trained it before the presentation, but now I lost uh, how to do it. Uh, oh. It's share the screen. Oh, okay, it's share the screen. Now it is share. Okay. Now, now we are. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. I will do another thing more to be perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, well, uh, now I feel more calm, but because things are are working. Uh, well, then um, I want to start to this presentation, this short presentation of the book, talking and uh, starting by the end, by the Centro de Fotografia, uh, and uh, thank them, the institution, but all the persons, I, and the whole team of the institution, but here I put the images of Mauricio, Daniel, the director, and Nadia, the one who made the design of the book and that helped me a lot in all the work with the revisions. And uh, I have to thank them because it was not an uh, easy task to prepare these three editions. And, uh, and they, they made it possible with a hard work. And I am very thankful to them and to the opportunity to be here sharing this project with an audience that is uh, uh, important uh, uh, for all of us to, to let them know about the project. I also had to thank all the persons and institutions who helped me, to, uh, who supported this project in many places and occasions. And of course, uh, Fernando and Grant, uh, who join us in this conversation and Grant, who, uh, as he knows, he already knows now since uh, last year in Montevideo, he had been an important influence at, uh, almost uh, 30 years ago to, to, to oh, 20 years ago to, to start a research in history of photography when he came to Brazil and I made a fantastic uh, presentation of the uh, from uh, Mark 
Tourelle uh, from France, Christine Bach, the uh, creator of the Musée du Cabernet, Marie Christine Claes from Belgium, a person who helped me a lot uh, in the in finding the the issues uh, connected to the expedition in Belgium. So uh, the, all these friends and persons who work with photography, who love photography, they are part of this project. And this expression around the world is a fundamental idea for this expedition. Uh, because it was conceived to be unique, uh, to be unique uh, just because it was the first school ship around the world for commanding positions in the French and Belgian merchant navy. But also because it was the first uh, 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 expedition to record the travel by photographic means with a precise and accurate representation of places and objects. So to understand this experience, uh, we should consider the voyage and the images place that the, the voyage and the images place an important role in the European expansion through the rest of the world in 19th century. And uh, the book has, uh, I think, 160 images of this pre-photographic iconography that were uh, usually seen by people at that moment when photography appeared with, as a new media for representing the world. So uh, this uh, this uh, object that is the camera, the photographic, the, the daguerreotype camera, so heavy, made of wood. And uh, it was a long story to come to this camera, because a, long, a story of lens, and much longer than the story of chemical progress, process that were uh, just uh, developed. A few years later, the the daguerreotype camera was uh, the, the daguerreotype process was revealed for the world. But this uh, was the first photographic process to be commercialized as an art uh, without, uh, with no prerequisites accessible to all. And this was a very important idea of the beginning of photography that was uh, commanding the presence of this object in this expedition with a liberal and uh, idea, liberal in the sense of 19th century, of bringing the light of Europe to the rest of the world. The secrets of the inventions, the, of this invention, were explained and publicized in Paris on 19 August, and the ship left France and the port of Nantes in 25 September. So since then, countless books had been published to explain the history of this invention and to discuss the power of photography images in our culture. It was a long way until photography really became accessible to all to the poor, to the black, to the homeless, the ones who had given their images to photographers but were not able to represent themselves. And this is why I choose this image, Sao Paulo, my city, by Marco Aurelio, in a project where the, the human rights secretary of Sao Paulo in that period, in 2015, uh, made this project of giving a camera to these homeless people to represent themselves and to take photographs of the city. This is possible today as many other types of photography because of digital images. So it's a long way that we, we can understand if we understand better 
at the beginning of this story. So uh, I wild the, the work I had in this almost 20 years. I had been researching this subject, even if because it would take um, much longer time. But combined with uh, traditional sources, digital images presented an important tool for for a research around the archives of many around the the world of many places: Brazil, France, Belgium, Portugal, Uruguay, Chile, and even a personal trip. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the personal trip to Valparaíso, where the Oriental ship wrecked in, on 23 July uh, 1840. So the invention of the daguerreotype and the arrival of the expedition, uh, uh, having on board this astonishing invention, uh, were reported by many Latin American newspapers. The letters sent home by students during the long journey were also published by uh, European newspapers. During the first years of this research, it was an intensive work. Uh, go to these archives and find these uh, newspapers. But nowadays, most of this, news, this source can be seen at our home, uh, in our uh, computers, by digital images. So the, the, the work I did is started with traditional source, and I had to transcribe French manuscripts and even learn French studying by this old manuscript. But uh, later, and it was very difficult to find the biographical information of all the persons involved in this expedition. But later, with the digital source, it was possible to, to combine this traditional uh, documents with the information I could uh, find at the internet. So, and also combine, for example, in this, oh, sorry, the biographical information of the ones who travel in the expedition with uh, information that comes now by Wikipedia and other sources. So this is the way we work now with this combining this uh, two different types of source. And uh, so uh, what is the, just to, to conclude, what is the main contribution? Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, this book can present. First, I have to say that I am thankful to all researchers who preceded me in this journey, because it would not be possible to come to this book with this wide uh, presentation of this expedition without uh, the work of many historians that uh, try to find things and information about this expedition. But the first demonstrations of the daguerreotype in South America by the, the Oriental Hydrographic Travelers tended to be seen by these historians as amazing and exceptional events, considering that the secrets of the invention had just uh, been revealed in Paris when the ship left the port of Nantes. So I tried to demonstrate that fitting the expedition with the daguerreotype camera was not an improvised or casual decision, but one of the links in a complex network of commercial interests and diplomatic negotiations, scientific exchange, and cultural changes in this moment of the expansion of uh, capitalism in Europe to the rest of the world and the creation of many colonies and, and, and in the, the Afri in Africa and South America. So the connections established in this research convinced me 
that uh, the Oriental Hydrograph was planned with the aim to be the first voyage around the world to use the novelty represented by photography as part of the international affairs and cultural experience of the mid 19th century. This complex and multifaceted network demonstrates the uniqueness of the circumnavigation voyage, and it is this puzzle that is presented in this book. So, uh, I, I, I really conclude now. I would like to say that this story, a story like that, when it finally comes to a book, it's not an end, uh, but just the beginning of all the travels around the world. <laughs> because uh, new documents and images had been found in many places and will continue to appear during the next years to enlarge and refresh this story. So, like the reproduction of uh, made by Mark Ferreira, a Brazilian, the, the best Brazilian photographer of 19th century, uh, at the end of uh, the, the, this period, uh, with of the daguerreotypes supposedly made by uh, Louis Conte, the chaplain of uh, the expedition when they stayed in Rio. So this was uh, one fantastic image. We see how he made, he made the reproduction of a daguerreotype with uh, uh, negative on glass in the end of 19th century. And it was in the archive of the grandson of Marc Ferreira, a great historian of photography all this time. And uh, he had not, uh, it seems that he had not realized the existence of this uh, image. Or oh, the amazing drawings of uh, John of the Voyage left by one of the students that remained unnoticed by almost two centuries and uh, now recently discovered by the, this friend from Chile and that uh, we hope one day will be published if the owner <laughs> let us uh, reach this document to see, uh, to know it better, because unfortunately it was not discovered when I was writing the book. But uh, this will come all the time, and we hope uh, that uh, Perhaps some daguerreotypes are in the roof of uh, European houses, forgotten all this uh, time, and they one day can come and we will have more uh, images and treasures from this travel to understand better this network in that uh, connected to that expedition. So this is uh, what I would like to present before having the conversation with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Ines. Uh, I want to ask uh, to return the video of Maria Ines. Camera, please. Well, thank you. Thank you. This is very important, uh, uh, what Maria Ines have mentioned. It's a really interesting book in all senses, in different aspects and, and uh, a focus on, on, on different, in three different uh, ex, um, axes. Uh, one, the, the context of the moment of the invention, the context of the political situation in, in France, the context of a preparation of this this uh, school uh, a boat or uh, whatever uh, training bo boat uh, for bring uh, all these uh, uh, young men uh, to be trained as uh, uh, navy officials for the commerce as you say for the capitalist expansion and in the middle the daguerreotype the, the the equipment one month before the departure of the uh, Oriental Fragat, uh, uh, the daguerreotype was announced by Aragó in 
the session of August 19 in Paris. It's how these things start to match, start to align in, in, the, in the landscape of the, the as you say, as you said, the, the incredible uh, a combination of, uh, uh, of events, of important events. Well, I think uh, it's important to, to, to get to the um, comments of Mr. Romer, who is in charge of the foreword of the English version. So the book has two introductions now. Yes. Paolo knows, knows and Grand Romer. So please, Grant, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, I must say that I've been struck with the extraordinary nature of this publication in two different ways. One is, of course, the devotion of, uh, you know, the professional and lifetime devotion of a true historian to answering a question that should have been answered more deeply a long time ago. Uh, how it came to be answered now uh, and so extensively uh, and so well is part of the history uh, that should be recognized here. The other is that uh, it's published by the Center for Photography in Montevideo, Uruguay. Uh, there are many museums, well, I'd ask you the question, how many museums of photography do you think there are in the world? Uh, there are many, not really many. There's many mean five, 10, 15, 20. I, I doubt that there are more than 20 in the world. How many centers of photography are there? Uh, if there's another 20 that could be named, that, that's really a lot. How many are uh, publishing something uh, that's really worthy of international uh, attention and that serves international knowledge, I'd say none other than the one in Montevideo, Uruguay. I just uh, am astonished by the quality of the uh, research, the beauty and, and the, you know, of design and illustrations of the, of the work and the fact that it's, it's being given to the world. Uh, and shared widely what, why, oh, why of all places on earth is it coming out of Montevideo, Uruguay? Uh, it shows a true uh, dedication to not only knowledge, but sharing. Uh, the theme is photography, but photography touches everything, as I, I, I said. Uh, this is really something quite extraordinary and uh, of such a high quality that it deserves uh, uh, attention and attention not just from historians of photography. The question of sort of first encounter with photography is an interesting one. The daguerreotype was announced in uh, basically January 1839 that there was such a thing and it was being confirmed by the foremost scientists of, uh, of Europe uh, that there was such a thing. It took nine months for the public revelation of the process, but as of late August, 1839, uh, it was made public. The material was available. Uh, the equipment, the chemistry, the manual was available. And then the question which the whole world should have is when did finally a camera show up with somebody who trying at least to make a, a photograph. Uh, every country on earth uh, should have asked that question and had an answer. Uh, a lot of countries have. Uh, in the United States, the answer was, well, by late September, September 28th, 29th, it had reached New York. Now, what's amazing to me about that is not that it reached New York, but how long does it take for news to go around the world? That something announced in Paris, how long did it take to get to London? The answer was three days. How long did it take to get from Liverpool to New York City? The answer was uh, 14 days. It was brought by the first transatlantic steam 
ship established in the in in uh, cross Atlantic transportation, and that brings up another thing. Gee, when did the first transatlantic steam passenger ship uh, est establish regular transport? That, as I gone through the world with the, you know, somehow around the issue of the preservation of photography, I was surprised to learn that it reached Brazil as early as it did. And then in Montevideo, it was astonishing. It didn't take that long, really not that long for it to reach. And it brought up this question of, wow, what sort of sea traffic was there? How regular was it? Uh, how long did it take to get from one place to the other? Uh, what was news then? How did it move? So just in newspaper accounts and letters. And it's another thing, how old was the technology and the commerce of newspapers in 1839. Does it go back to 1639? It does not. 1739? It does not. Regular mail doesn't go back very far. It's a great and a deep story that touches many things. It's not just about photography by any means. Uh, I don't know if Maria Inez knows, uh, when the announcement of the daguerreotype was made, in January of 1839, three days later, there was an English claim to priority of in invention. The whole Fox Talbot story. Three days later, Arago, Bio, and Van Humboldt received the same letter from Fox Talbot claiming priority. Three days later, after the public announcement, and very quick, very quick. In March of 1839, Herschel, the great astronomer of England, Mr. Science of England, visited Daguerre with a representative group of uh, British scientists, all Irish and Scottish, not a single Englishman, saw the daguerreotype in person, were amazed by it. And Herschel had the nerve to ask for the secret of the process so that it could be given to the English polar expedition. Of course, it was declined, what an impertinent request. And that brought up to me when I discovered that this whole, the English polar expedition of 1839, uh, how much I knew about around the world circumnavigations, were there a hundred examples before 1839? or 50 or 20, how long did it take? Who was making it? I didn't know nothing. This book opened my brain and my inquiry. And I've, I've found out amazing things which changed the way I think about England, about France, about the United States, about communication, about technology, etc. This is a wonderful book because of Maria Ness's very broad inquiry because of her professional training as a real historian in a culture that has that professional category, not just an academic, but a real historian. The book touches on so many subjects that just opens up one's mind and curiosity and inquiry and aids, absolutely aids in asking the right question. For instance, I'll ask anybody, can you say how many circumnavigations of the world had been made before the Oriental left port? From Magellan to who? The Mont d'Urberville, I can't even say the name. Uh, had the South Pole been, the magnetic South Pole been reached by 1839? Well, who cares? Well, they cared. Big time in 1839. Was it the French? Was it the Americans? Was it the English? They were all mounting expeditions to get to the magnetic South Pole. This is a great, great story. Uh, and it's and not only a great story, but it's been done greatly. So that's my sort of introduction. And I'd ask uh, Maria, I mean, what's really the first point you got on the path of this inquiry. Sure, the story, who was first to make a photograph in Brazil? Uh, the answer was the Abbe Comte. 
uh, that blew my mind. Why is a, a, a religious figure making the first, uh, it's on a French expedition around the world. All right, so, you know, all right, I guess it makes some sort of sense. I didn't inquire much further and there wasn't much more of an answer because nobody really wanted to know much more of the answer. And just looking in the newspaper of the time really didn't tell, tell you too much. At what point did you find your feet on this road to do so much research, to answer so well and so, so, so broadly that question? Well, uh, well, this uh, personage, Louis Conte, was someone that we always, uh, all the historians of photography in Brazil and in Latin America, wanted to know more about him. And uh, when I started the research in France in 2001, I didn't know anything. Just uh, that uh, he was an abbé, and abbé in, in French, was translated into Portuguese as Abadi, as the priest of, uh, I would say Abadia, the, uh, someone Haiti. help me, uh, the... Haiti. Huh? Haiti. Haiti. Yes, but uh, no, he was a chaplain, and the chaplain in this um, uh, mission navy, they were, they were employed in the, in the ship to, to give, uh, to work uh, as chaplain, but also to be a part of uh, the crew doing things in the expedition. So uh, then I understand, I started understanding better what was a chaplain in this type of expedition. Later in France, I started to search everybody who was named Louis Comte, and then I discovered there were a lot of one. And there was one uh, that I, I went deep in the research, and then I finally discovered that it was not the man. So until I, I got uh, by internet searching his name in internet, an article of uh, uh, French uh, historian in a um, local association in the city where he died, talking about his life when he went back to Europe after leaving Uruguay uh, in the end of the 40s, and how he got, uh, he, he was a rich man uh, uh, then, and he died not having children, so he let his uh, properties to the, the employees of his house and where he is buried. And then I got, I could join with the sources I had already found in Nantes when I traveled to Nantes and a genealog genealogist, genealogist mm -hmm. from Nantes. I was so desperate to find all this, uh, to try to find something when he was born, why, where he was born, and she helped me because she had a huge experience in this kind of sources in France. So uh, then I could uh, have more information, and okay. and I I am sure that now with the information we have in the book, anyone that want to know more about him now is able to go to the French archives to get more information that is there, and also to the city where he, he was uh, buried and that perhaps there are things uh, in the city remaining from his life. So yes. I think this is- The Comte key turn the lock that made things click and add up, right? It was him, your pursuit of knowing more about him that was the, the prime uh, mover. At the beginning, it was the him and the expedition because I went to France to live one year with my, my family uh, and then and to work at the Carnavalier Museum, not to research this uh, expedition. But then I thought, oh, all the historians of uh, Latin America are curious about this. And I am living here and I have a, a huge experience in researching in archives. Why not to search this? And then I, 
Françoise Renaud, do Room I Worker, that Carnavalet Musée, that you know very well. We made an agreement. Okay, I work part of the week in the museum, and part of the week I go to the archive. So then it was this to search about the story of the expedition, perhaps because I I love the travels. So my mother had traveled all over the world. He, she made a travel around the world by plane way in the 60s. And uh, then I think both things were amazing for me to start research. France is one of the great nations for archives. I yes. used to teach that the French throw nothing out. They, not find it. they may not show it to you, but they don't throw anything out. <laughs> Well, I think that the one thing that perhaps people may be asking is why the French historians had not uh, written about this expedition so interesting. But the, this is also discussed in the book that uh, this expedition was forgotten somehow on purpose because it was uh, supported by the French government, the king of Belgium since the beginning. Uh, it was not an official expedition, but it was supported by the authorities, the ministers, the king, the government of these two countries. And it was supposed to be a success, but later, when the indiscipline started on board and when the conflicts and the, the embarkment, the disembarkment uh, of the students and uh, a family complaining that they had paid for this trip and the children were not uh, going to finish uh, the trip, they were leaving in the port. So all the problems that arrived in the expedition it uh, ended with the shipwreck in Valparaíso, and then the shipwreck was so, was a biggest suspicion that it was uh, uh, decided by the captain that it was not a, a, an accident, and so during two years there were processing the tribunals in Paris, and, and, and it ended in a complete failure to the maritime purpose. So I think that this was the main reason for a circumnavigation expedition that had been well recorded by all the French historians since the uh, uh, 18th century. In this I way, have... they had forgotten this. I also have two answers. The French have so much history, so much history that they can let certain things go uh, because it's, there's really so much to celebrate. For instance, in Paris, you go to Paris, where's the monument to the uh, place where the daguerreotype was invented? Uh, most people you know, don't know. Uh, when I was a boy in New York, there was a plaque on the side of the NYU building that my father showed me that said, here was the first daguerreotypes made in America. The plaque isn't there anymore, by the way. Uh, this sort of consciousness of, of the great achievements of the nation, there are so many great ones that it's hard to uh, uh, you know, hold them responsible for not tracking everything down. But it's also uh, another thing is the commercial aspect the official government support for commercial activity. Uh, it was very pioneering in French culture at that time. If you look uh, relative to other nations, uh, the history of first photography in those countries uh, are usually, first is sort of a scientific uh, uh, context, opticians are some of the first of the daguerreotypists. But in the United States, there was a real, uh, uh, there was, the monetary crisis, the first depression in the United States was in 1837. It lasted until 1845. And the daguerreotype was seen as a, a, a new business potentially. And believe it or not, that existed in France. Although it's announced in a, a scientific context, science and art, uh, the official government agency supporting commercial activity were the ones that asked Daguerre to make a special demonstration 
uh, at, at the, you know, the official headquarters of international commerce thinking. And that's also what gets the garotype on the ship. Also that entrepreneurial spirit, the individual entrepreneurial spirit, as well as the national entrepreneurial spirit and the embrace of technology in entrepreneurship and com commercial context is very, very interesting. And that history is not widely uh, understood and read. So, uh, yes. There's another aspect that's very interesting to the story that's hard for you to tell is taking, you can have a lesson in how to make a daguerreotype, uh, but going out with the camera then after that one lesson or two days of lessons does not make you able to make uh, daguerreotypes on a moving ship going from country to country, temperature to temperature, this and that. Uh, is not, it's quite surprising that they had any success anywhere and they didn't have success at the beginning. And falling on your face in front of the king of any country, whatever your act, Grant can do, uh, can sing opera in front of... Well, Grant is now frozen singing opera <laughs> by the internet. But if you have something to say, please go ahead, Marines. Yes. Uh, well, while he comes back, uh, I would say I would say that. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, you want to finish it to to Grant? You want to finish your? No. no? Other than there's yeah. there's there's. there's Still more to your history to be written. Uh, and this is the time that's a very important time in which the existing history of photography uh, really needs to be reconsidered again. Uh, there's a different uh, way of telling the story. There's different questions. And uh, the commercial aspect is one, the technical aspect is one, the human experience of being uh, first in the field with this, the development of not only the art, the technology, but the, the business, that uh, needs to be uh, better detailed than it has been so far. And I think you've made a great start on that. Ahora sí, Marines. Well, uh, he commented so many things, but uh, perhaps I will not be able to, to talk about everything. But uh, one thing that uh, I would like to say is that uh, uh, it was so, it was uh, both things that was surprising for the uh, uh, the the historians in Latin America when they started to see the newspapers with the news about this expedition was the moment when the daguerreotype the secrets of the daguerreotype was revealed in France in 19 August and the moment uh, where the the ship left France but uh, i think that uh, besides having lessons with daguerre before the announcement of the 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 secrets of uh, the daguerreotype that some had it and perhaps as Louis Quant had uh, said he also had it we we don't know if it was true or if it was just an advertisement but uh, what is in this month many people were were explaining the process and uh, some uh, opticians were selling and I found uh, the optician of the expedition that I saw in one of the documents of the expedition was Bianchi. Uh, he was selling uh, cam the daguerreotype cameras in Toulouse and in Paris uh, before the, the end of September. So uh, this make it possible and possible to have even more than one, one camera in, on board because uh, Lucas had bought, had commanded a camera to the guerre and he had one camera, but perhaps also Pont had one camera. Uh, I'm not sure if he left uh, the expedition in Montevideo with his camera. So he started to work with the, the daguerreotyping in Montevideo, but he could have 
bought a new one. So there are things in the research that we still have, we, we have to, to know better, but I can't wait to know everything, every details that uh, is not so clear to publish the book. And with these talks and this uh, the sharing that we make, we things will be even more clear. But regarding the training, I think uh, it's interesting that uh, when I saw an experience in Rio in 80, 1989, a presentation of the daguerreotype process in the same place where it had happened 150 years before, I found it amazing and not so easy to do. But uh, I see that uh, in the expedition, they, they had failure in many occasions. And uh, in front of the king of uh, Portugal, uh, the queen and the king of Portugal in uh, Africa. But uh, when they came to Rio, it seems that they had uh, been successful because the press says that and uh, in Montevideo also. So I think they, they, had, uh, they had trained when they were in land and probably they have learned. But it is, it is uh, you that practice and know how to do the gerotypes. You should, uh, uh, this, you probably, for sure, you understand much better the difficulties they have, but also the, the knowledge they already had that we lost nowadays to make a daguerreotype. Because I think this was also important. What's that? Variously, people are saying, oh, it's very difficult, blah, blah, blah. It's simultaneously very easy and very difficult. What there needs to be a learning, there's a learning curve, an experiential learning curve. De Guerre had it so he could demonstrate the process and show others how successful, how easy it is. But it's not so easy once you're left on your own. And uh, there's many variables. It's quite an interesting uh, story uh, that that needs better light as well. It's quite amazing how few daguerreotypes that are the first photographs made in any country survive. Uh, many countries know when it was made or who made it, but it doesn't exist anymore. They're lucky if they have a poor copy of it uh, to show. Uh, an early daguerreotype, let's say anything made in the first two years, 40, 41, even the 42. If you see what survives, uh, uh, across the board there by the later standard of a, of a lower quality. They're not as bright. They're often a, of a very strange color that you don't, you know, they're not neutral black and white. Uh, there's a lot to, to yet show on that point, but it was a photography. When even the dimmest, funniest, weird picture, if it came out at all, it was a miracle. And even being able to see the actual camera, the chemistry, the operation, that satisfied curiosity that had been built throughout the world. So they had a show, that's for sure. And they learned on the way, and it was a good reason to learn. But it's one of the things about the history of photography is the technical aspect that determines uh, what a photograph looks like, and even the definition of what is a photograph. That's another thing about your book. You were able to illustrate it with many period lithographs that really are, are wonderful. And even lithography was a new technology relative to uh, picture making. You know, it's not, not, not considered here much. And again, it's, uh, it was a German invention, but it had its flowering in France and not that much earlier than the expedition as well. The uh, astrolabe uh, circumnavigation was beautifully illustrated with uh, yeah. lithographs. Anyway, there's so many things to talk about, uh, talking now, about one thing I would like, uh, One thing I would like to comment about this, uh, the images that I think is a very good uh, aspect that you 
point is that uh, it was uh, an option uh, because I could illustrate Paris in photographs from old photographs, but uh, old photograph didn't exist in in 1839 or so. I wanted to to. To have a book, and we made it together, and me to have to have a book with uh, the visual appearance of that world, the 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 visual culture of that world, that was astonished by the the invention of photography, a new way to represent the world. So of course we had in the book we have in the book certain daguerreotypes of. Uh, Daguerre later taken uh, uh, by others and uh, some, but uh, in general, we have the maps and the lithographies and the engravings of this word pre photograph because it is, uh, it is a way to the reader to understand better what was that visual word when the photographic image appeared. And this, I am very happy with the. Uh, result and the, all the institutions that had uh, supported the project and given us these images. Well, it was a very wise decision and it, it is beautifully illustrated. And that's one of the great strengths of the, of the uh, history really is it's illustrated appropriately to the period in which the daguerreotype was introduced. Uh, I could teach for the rest of my life every day with your book. Uh, I hope that uh, that's realized by others as well, how, how rich it is with uh, uh, illustrations, with points made, with uh, bringing forth information that was hidden and buried uh, and wouldn't come to light unless uh, you uh, did momentous work to do it. And secondly, the publication. Uh, funding a publication is not a simple uh, thing that any institution does. And uh, my hat is off uh, to the center for uh, not only uh, recognizing the value of the work, but seeing that it's shared and disseminated uh, quite broadly in the world. And that's, I'm done. Thank you, Grant. Uh, uh, and I, I, I want to um, welcome any question or answer that our audience have. So I encourage all of them to prepare uh, the questions and let us know by the chat if you want to formulate the question. So we have a first question uh, and I ask uh, Carlos Bertanesian to uh, appear in the screen and formulate the question, please, Carlos. Is Carlos around? No, I think Carlos is, we lost Carlos. Well, yeah, anyway. but uh, I can say that I see him in the chat. He was asking us, me, about how many cameras there had been in the, in the expedition. But uh, I had already commented that uh, it is, we, we knew that it had one camera because it, we know by the press that they took photographs, so the garotypes from Brazil and Montevideo. And later, because of uh, direct wood research, we, knew, we know that uh, Captain Lucas went to Australia and took some uh, and sold his camera in uh, in uh, Sydney, so because of that, we can and and, and all this research that Marie Christine in Belgium uh, helped me and gave to me about his connection with the guerre, we know that uh, Captain Lucas had commanded a camera from the guerre, and he had his own camera, and it was this camera that, after the shipwreck, he went to. Australia and sold this camera. So I guess that this camera, as it was a beautiful camera, perhaps still exists in some collection in Australia. But 
there, there was uh, the, the possibility of having other camera because of this the, that I had shown in the book that Bianchi was already the optician of the expedition. He was connected to Giraud, the, the, the partner of the guerre. He was an optician who was selling cameras in September. So it is possible that uh, even Conte had, or, and if perhaps or if not count another one had uh, a camera because uh, Solia de Sov uh, uh, professor of astronomy he remained in Rio and a few months later he was also demonstrating the gerotype to the elite of uh, Rio, and he became a kind of teacher of uh, the daguerreotype to the emperor. So the idea, the wrong idea in the past was that it was only one camera and that it was so rare to have a camera. I think it was rare, but not so uh, impossible to have more than one. But this, uh, we we have to research more about Rui Conte in Montevideo to understand if he had a camera with him when he stayed in the city, he left the expedition, or if he bought it just after. This I couldn't uh, find in, with the, the, um, the, this research. So yes, this... okay. Well, I, I have to add something about the the Mexican case, in which uh, a French fragate, La Fleur, brought uh, Monsieur Jean Prelier Dubois to to Mexico. He was a French resident in Mexico, and he brought his daguerreotype equipment. And in the same boat, the other three equipments came. Uh, consignated to another French uh, uh, merchant in Mexico City. Uh, so at the same moment, in the late uh, December 1839 and, and early January 1840, four equipments at least arrived to Mexico City, both uh, in certain way uh, connected by the French uh, merchants and dealers. In the case of uh, Jean Prelier, he was an engraver. He had a, a, a printing press and he was man involved in graphic arts. And then the, 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 he came from a family who who has been established in Mexico. His father-in-law was the Prelier uh, 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 printer for, uh, for the uh, government. For, for he made all the heading paper and all these things. And they were traveling very often to, to France in order to uh, re uh, furnish his uh, inventories their inventories of uh, paper, uh, very fine paper, and, and the inks and all these uh, materials, because we have a very close um, uh, commerce with France, very close, very strong. Uh, uh, as I said at the beginning, we were looking to France and not to Spain. And also, yeah. Grant was telling about the mail, the post, and the newspapers. The newspapers are very interesting because this is a kind of a standard. Everybody know about something through the newspaper. Was the yeah. news communication with society, the little announcements of the, the medical physician that came with uh, the Oriental announcing his services for ophthalmologic diseases and eye sickness and all these things. This that is was... one. Yeah. No, this is one uh, point very important that uh, uh, 
bringing is that uh, the newspaper in this uh, is, is certain this expedition i realized that in many places they had already learned about the gerotype in invention they had learned how fascinated was fascinating was photography but they had never seen a photograph or of the gerotype and not even a demonstration but they knew about it so it was a an invention widely diffused before people had access to the invention. And the newspaper, one translated the other because the newspaper in, were published in Paris and then they were translated in Lisbon and then they were translated in Rio and then in Montevideo uh, because the, the ships were bringing the newspaper and all the news the editors were translated in the news. So many people were expecting to know the, the get to, to get to know the invention and many people in certain places in Latin America were expecting the expedition to come with the invention because when people this uh, I could uh, find in the research is that when the ship left Rio de Janeiro uh, there was uh, there was a newspaper in Montevideo that had already uh, said an article that the ship was coming with the invention. The same happened in Valparaíso. So people were because the editors they had a huge connection uh, with masonry and uh, other uh, liberal and political agreements. So they 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 were promoting the invention even before people get to know the invention. This was very important rule of the newspapers. Ariadna found yesterday a. Uh that uh, in Peru, they were disappointed that the Oriental had sunk because they were, <laughs> and already the news had reached uh, Peru that uh, the expedition was uh, making the garotypes and was going to bring the news. And it's, it's su quite surprising how fast news traveled in, the, in that time. Well, no, no. Did you, Grant, did, didn't hear you. You want to continue? I'm asking Maria, does she know that this P Peruvian uh, ad uh, newspaper reference to the Oriental uh, anticipated uh, coming to Peru? Sorry? Don't, I could, don't worry, I we'll stop it here. No, it was a uh, noise. Sorry. I couldn't listen to your question. Yes, in the Ariadna found in an article uh, in the Daguerrean Journal uh, about daguerreotype in Peru. They reproduced a newspaper article in which they are disappointed that the Oriental sank, that they were expecting it. But the news of the expedition and its activities had already reached Peru. But yes, because... Sorry. Uh, no, it's because it's cutting. Yes, it's, it's cutting. The, but uh, uh, I think this uh, this uh, whole of the news were were important to promote the invention, but they were important also to support the expedition because uh, Lucas, the captain, he was very smart before getting the support of the authorities. He, he promoted the expedition in the press in France and, to, and with an ambiguous word saying that it was with the support of the government. So all the time people thought that it was an official expedition. So in Portugal, they were received as uh, a ship of the Marine, French Marine, and it was not, it was a merchant navy. So this ambiguity was also important to, to have support from the port and it was given by the press. So it, it, to understand this story is also important to understand the, the whole of the press in the 19th century that became more and more important 
until recently because now I think it's the social media that have this power to promote the things as the press had before. Okay, well, we have a, a Nuno Borges de Araujo wants to uh, share two comments. Please, uh, Nuno Borges, could you please uh, make your comments you asked for? Is Nuno in the meeting room? No? No, Nuno is not in the meeting room. Well, we have a... Uh, 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 different uh, uh, messages in the chat. Uh, uh, can you see there is uh, congratulations, a lot of uh, uh, congratulations for my Ines. Lauro Escorel also is commenting. It's a wonderful book, wonderful written uh, research. And he, made, and he made a wonderful, uh, movie, documentary movie about photography and uh, in fact too <laughs> the last year and it was very important uh, and I thank him and all the comments I okay? Well for our audience you have to know La Laurence Correll is one of the best documentary and filmmakers in Brazil his uh, mm -hmm. uh, documentary I love especially Libertarios, Lauro congratulations uh, and well, I think Nuno is around. Please open your microphone, Nuno, and make your comments and your camera, please. Nuno Borges, please. Okay, I, I was not allowed to, to speak before <laughs> by the amphitheon, but now I'm online. Uh, so, I would like first to congratulate Ines Turazi and all involved in, in, this, in this work uh, for their publication, and, and I, which I'm very eager to, to, to read. It, it looks very fine, what I've seen. I've seen it very quickly because only today I, knew, I know I, I became, uh, I knew of, of the publication. And, um, I would like to make some, some brief comments, I hope brief. Uh, one is that I think uh, for the reason why French didn't research this as, as it was natural to, is because uh, probably it didn't affect so much uh, French photographic history than it, than it affected other countries. It affected uh, South uh, Portugal and, and, uh, and, and South America and Australia. Uh, uh, and, it, and it didn't affect much France in, in, in reality. So they have a lot to, to, to deal with. So that's probably the cause, uh, I think. Even though uh, there's an article in the mid uh, 20th century, which is mentioned by Derek Wood, I'm not sure if the article is, I don't remember if it's only uh, about uh, Sauvage, but I think it's also uh, about so, so and connection to the Oriental. Um, on, on the other hand, I would like to say that, um, to comment that uh, like, like uh, the history of, of photography is, is, a, is a long process. It's not something that happened. It wasn't invented. It was, um, it comes from, uh, from the, um, are you listening to me? Well. Yes, yes, go ahead. So uh, it's a long process which comes from the camera obscura, uh, the, 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 the sensitivity of, of, of uh, some salts to light, and then the fixing of the image. Uh, actually, within the several processes, the, what determines the, what, what people call invention of photography is the fixing of the image, the, the ability to fix photographic images. Um, um, I will, I will also like to say that uh, as in photography, uh, this was a process, the, the story of the oriental research, it's also a, a process. And, and I, I, I shared mails with, um, it, it was a team that, that interested me, and I shared mails with, with Derek Wood, which public, published an article uh, many years ago 
Um, and uh, <clears throat> I myself have been researching this team on, on Lisbon for some weeks. I've been in the, um, in the Royal House archives in the, and I didn't found anything for, for instance, like a, a document that, that asks to, to be received by the Queen. There, there's nothing, I, I found nothing about it. Um, um, I found in the Navy archives uh, the, the documents of the, the arrival and the departure of, of Doriental, and also in, in Madeira Island, which differs uh, about one day from, from uh, previous um, uh, information. Um, uh, and I also saw almost every journal in the National Library of that period, and I didn't found anything about uh, any mention about the Oriental. You were much more, more worried about uh, a, pol a political question with Spain, uh, and and the Oriental isn't noticed. It's not not the not uh, not also the parade that that they that there are good mentions mentions he, they did in in Lisbon. Um, I will, I will also like to, to, to mention uh, that uh, Alexandre Rodriguez was able to go. I wasn't able. I, I intended to go to France, but I wasn't able. So uh, Alexandre Ramirez uh, has been also able to, to has been able to go to France to, re to do the research, and he also published the book on that. He, he advanced. Uh, so w this is like. Uh, um, a process. We are each time we are getting to know more about about uh, this history, uh, and there's also a, a film by I think it's by Tevo Diaz about this voyage. Um, uh, I I I would, would to conclude. I would like to say that that um, between 1839, which which uh, um, Ramirez proved that was. Um, there was um, uh, an experience to in the in the audition to the Queen of Portugal, which didn't work very well, as it seems. Um, and 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 between the first uh, uh, known photographs, the daguerreotypes took taken in Portugal, and the first notices of it, there are two years, almost two years. We the, the oldest photos we know here uh, that that has been taken here were in. 1841, and um, that's all. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, uh, thank you, Nono. I follow your your group on Facebook, and I am very happy to Thanks. see how many things come in this group. And this is what I remember. I am not so used to uh, with Facebook. And then today I remember, oh, I have to put the... The, the folder in this group. So yes, um, I have been, I, I, I had uh, some books from the historians, Portuguese historians, and then I lived in Portugal in 2012, and uh, Portugal has a huge heritage on photography, and, and uh, uh, it was, uh, Fantastic to know this, but surprisingly, I didn't find the notice news in the press as I expected. But I also get uh, went uh, had contact with uh, Alexandre Ramirez, and uh, we shared. Uh, and he, he was very kind, and we share information. Later, I got his book that is also quoted in the book as the movie of Tevo that now became also a partner to other projects. So this Oriental is uh, very interesting how it also connects people to new things because it's so interesting. But when you say that uh, the French, the European historians were not so interested in this expedition because they were interested in the history of their photography, I agree, but this the story of this expedition is not a story of a photographic experience. It's a story of a circumnavigation travel. And the photograph is part of this circumnavigation travel. And circumnavigation travels, they were widely 
recorded by the historians. There are lots of congress of uh, maritime history. And, and now, in fact, I am inscribed to talk in one of these congress to the maritime historians, because I had to go in this subject. Uh, and I, I didn't even know how to swim, but I have to go to go deep in the history of Mari French uh, Marine. So uh, this, I think, I have this idea that it was not recorded in the 19th century to the Anal Maritime, that was a, a famous publication in France, because it was a, a not so successful expedition for the French. Uh, in fact, a shame because it had so many dark sides. But yeah. for us, it was the expedition who brought photography and we were curious about that. And also Portugal, the, to Portugal. And one thing I found that is very, very interesting regarding this history in Portugal was uh, the letter of the the ambassador in the, the French ambassador in Portugal saying to this to his uh, the minister of uh, foreign affairs that this expedition should not be successful because it had so much indiscipline if they had not being so serious in the way they were dr drinking in Point Lisbon, they were so. It is funny because he comments. It is interesting that he comments about the experience of the the Girotype that was not successful, but he also predicted what would happen with the expedition. And these sources are in the diplomatic uh, archives in France. And this is a very hard task. These sources, they are not digitalized. To go in these archives, you have to have authorization. You leave your bags or things at the entrance. You stay there without any food or only water. The holiday research, and then you go out because it's the the foreign affairs archives in France and in Belgium they are very strict to this so this was uh, the opportunity I had to, to research in these countries as I lived in France and this I hope now will give more information for others to to go deep I find it curious that um, uh, quite a few not to say many of the students that went in, in the voyage were, uh, it was a voyage to supposedly to, to learn merchant navy, uh, about merchant navy. And, and uh, many of the students, uh, as I said, uh, perhaps quite, quite, quite a f more than a few were, were of important aristocratic French families. Wh wh why would they, like to know about uh, uh, merchant navy. I don't. I'm not sure. Very sure, but some were were titulars, were people of of important families in France. It's. I find it curious. No, it's not uh, so curious. If you get to understand how they lit, and how was uh, the properties of the hard, the, the big properties in France, who would. Uh, in heritage, the big property, what would happen to the sister, to the brothers, young brothers, and how the colonial uh, expansion of uh, Europe was attracting the entrepreneurs to have business with Oceania, Australia, and Latin America, and to bring products here. So then, these young boy, uh, young from France and Belgium, they were supposed to 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 make this uh, career to promote business uh, and the, because it was the agricultural products of France and Belgium that were being shared also with the manufactured product. So you, this is the, the thing I had, as uh, Grant had said, I had to connect so many subjects to understand the presence of photography in this expedition. Okay, okay. well, uh, I think we are going to 
start closing our session. Uh, you have too many uh, messages in the chat. Uh, and so I see my brother, yes. Christine Bartier, Roberto Botello, uh, Hernani Durasi, your brother. My brother. Oh, so you have uh, congratulations from a lot of colleagues and friends. Perhaps a, a, last, uh, a last comment to close. Uh, I want to, to ask uh, my Ines and Grant if they have a closing uh, intervention uh, before we left uh, the meeting room. Well, uh, you are going to, um, sorry, you are going to you make want, a comment. You want to make a final comment? Ah, yes. I want to, to my final comment is that it's fantastic to, to research the history of an expedition around the world and to comment this expedition with a virtual meeting around the world because we had you are in Mexico, Grant is in the United States, they are in Uruguay, Nuno is in Portugal, Carl is in Sweden, Christine is in France, uh, Marie Christine is in Belgium. So we have so many people connected by this virtual meeting and uh, it is new for me this experience of talking about my work in uh, in a meeting like that and in English, but uh, uh, I think this is uh, very interesting to be this occasion connected to this the subject of this book. So I feel very happy and thank everybody for the questions, the message, and, and once more Center for, Center for Photography of Montevideo for this opportunity. Thank you. Grant? You want to close? Uh, I think it would make a great screenplay. It's a dramatic <laughs> story. Uh, properly uh, acted, it would move lots of people. So, <laughs> so much to say. Thanks a lot for including me. That's all. Well, now I want to uh, thank all of you, uh, your presence, your contributions, your interest in this uh, book, in this research. And I want to remain all of you that the book is available online in a PDF format from the website of Centro de Fotografia. So you can uh, find the three versions, the uh, Portuguese, the Spanish, and now the English version. Uh, Centro de Fotografia is uh, characterized for giving books, not to selling books, to <laughs> give the book, to give a present of the book, and always uh, is a kind of uh, contribution uh, uh, with public uh, uh, resources. There are public benefits. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you for the team of uh, Centro Fotografia who is behind the showers, behind the curtain of all this uh, uh, virtual meeting. Uh, thank you, Nadia, that has been here. The designer of the book is around here. And thank you for uh, being with us. And please share this information with your close others and significant others. And, your colleagues. The book is there, it's available, and it's a very important contribution for the Latin American photo history. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Maria Ines, for your time. Thank you, Mauro and Daniel, and Mauricio, who is also, uh, Mauricio Bruno, who is also- Fernando, Fernando. Yes. Uh, one thing I forgot to make a last uh, to, to comment, uh, to thank all the translators into English, because uh, sorry for Ines and uh, also the others who reviewed the translation, because as you know, I hardly speak English, but they made uh, translation and this, we work it together because of course I can read, but it, uh, I have to thank them and Ines is in our meeting and I am sorry for not uh, commenting at the beginning. 
thank you for mentioning and to remember this important uh, uh, job and work of translators who really have to be compenetrate with the uh, original version and to give the sense and it's uh, something you uh, mentioned is also the the book is very well translated very well uh, found all the terminology in the english version well thank you very much uh, it's time if you want to show up and switch on your cameras and your microphones we can wave ourselves in the screen if you want this is becoming a tradition for CDF in all the virtual lectures to try to say hello and to, to make a little gallery in your screen so we can show everybody who is in the other side. Say, Paulo, Nos, there. Thank you. And everybody Thank you. who attend is there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mauro and, and Marcelo and Pablo, the floor is now yours. The technical controls goes to uh, Montevideo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.